Now we're in millennium mood, or shall I say desert island food mood. If you could take just one dish forward with you into the 21st century, what would it be? That's the tough decision we ask leading figures in the food world to make. The important thing about food for me is the context in which it's eaten. That's to say you cook for friends and family and to make them feel cared for, not to impress them. For me, the most important thing in food is honesty. Fish should taste of fish, chicken of chicken, and meat of meat. Keep it simple and let it taste of what it is. very important. Getting back to basics of food and production and being proud to go into a restaurant and order a dish that's British, if you know what I mean. Well, I think food should be above all things. It should be with luxury, a little bit of decadence, and I think it should be very sexy. Savoy chef Anton Edelman, he's gone for luxury with steak tartare, caviar and quail's eggs. My steak tartar is absolutely yummy. Before we started cooking anything, we added raw, didn't we? And what do you think is nicer than raw meat? You know, when you look at this piece of fillet, Scottish, of course, BSE free, I would say, look, is there anything nicer than this? We chop the meat, gherkins, some capers, a tiny little bit of olive oil, nicely, finely chopped onions, freshly chopped parsley, and then a small amount of chopped anchovies. But now we come to the real stuff. Now we add a bit of brandy and a little bit of Tabasco, because what we also want to achieve, we want to achieve that little And then we add some egg yolk. This is beluga caviar. When you say caviar, I think you should always say lots of it. And on the other one, we put a little egg like this. Can you think of anything more enticing? As we go into the third millennium, I think we need to come back to luxury. I think things are too simple. I think people are working too hard. I think we, we need to become more decadent again. I think we need to have more of what makes you feel good and what makes you feel nice. And we need to have more little celebrations like, like that. And I think when you eat a steak tartare and you get the, the sharpness from the spices and the tasco and the fullness from the flavor of the meat, which is, of course, the best meat that you can buy. And then on the top of that, you get caviar and you get a nice warm quail egg, which is runny and gooey and delicious. I think that we should really start our third millennium with. Anton Mosserman runs one of London's most exclusive dining clubs. He's deliberately chosen something simple, steamed sea bass with leek and tomato vinaigrette. It's my favorite dish. It's a very simple, straightforward, very honest dish as well, which I like. I like honesty in cooking. OK, fish stock with leek, carrots, onions, with the lemongrass. Steam basket goes on top of the pot. Meantime, I'm making the sauce, a bit of fish stock, a little bit of sherry vinegar, finely chopped shallots, coriander, add the tomatoes, the leek, season it with the pepper of salt. Then sauce on top of the fish. Steamed sea bass with tomato and leek vinaigrette with some olive oil to finish the dish. Wonderful. Food, of course, has changed over the years. Just think of the 70s where everything was full of cream, full of butter. All the sauces were really reduced. Uh, by 10 to 1 even, you have 10 gallons of cream and you cook it down to one gallon. And then with fresh butter, you make the sauce. Lots of alcohol, like white wine, uh, noy, prat, you name it. And then the actual ingredients of the main dish was overpowered. So here we are, a straightforward, very simple dish. Everything is organic. And for me, that's the future. Nigella Lawson writes on food for Vogue and several national newspapers. Her dish for the next millennium is roast chicken. So much of what we've learned recently on television and elsewhere has been about chef's food and the chefs teaching us to cook the sort of food which is wonderful in a restaurant but not at all suitable for a home and very hard to cook. Um, I think really the food that I want to take into the future is the food that is perfect home food, just that I'll sit at home and eat with my family, my friends and a roast chicken is that.
entirely. My mother always cooked roast chicken, and I do it the same way she did, which is I put one half of a lemon inside and squeeze some lemon juice over, just so you get this wonderful lemony gravy. And then I put an onion either side here, just again, to make the gravy taste nice, because I think also gravy is kind of home food. And then I smear it with butter. I think butter makes the skin go crispier and you know, more golden, and that's really it. It's very plain and reassuring and comforting, but at the same time, because I suppose it's the whole bird rather than bits chopped up, that it does feel like something festive as well, that you do feel like you're sharing something from the one dish. My mother used to make roast chicken like this for me, and now I like to cook it for my children. And because I do think it's very important to have continuity, and in a sense, the food that I want to carry on eating is a food that I've loved in the past. Oliver Payton owns five restaurants. He's chosen a traditional British dish of beef with a selection of vegetables, including cavallaniere, an Italian black spinach. I have chosen uh, a, a dish totally made from British produce. Um, it's Welsh beef, which has been hung for 18 days, uh, cavallaniere, which comes from Bedfordshire, squash, which comes from Surrey, and a few other vegetables which come from the home counties. This dish sort of represents something about where we should be going and being proud to go into a restaurant and order, order a dish that's British. Steve and Terry, our wonderful chef, is presently preparing it. We're going to pan fry the beef. I'm going to cook it medium red. The uh, black cabbage is going to be sweated off with uh, sliced shallots and a glass of balsamic vinegar. That's going to be served underneath the beef. The squash are going to be cut into shapes and they're going to be roasted off with a little bit of caramelisation on them. That's going to garnish the dish. Then we have the Jerusalem artichokes and then we have a little red wine sauce which goes on the beef and pumpkin seed oil and roasted pumpkin seeds. Very simple. Since the 1950s, you know, food in this country has been dominated by foreign influences. Um, and, and, and a lot of produce has come from abroad. I think the reason farms are, you know, mass producing banal vegetables for supermarkets is because there has been no British cooking culture and there's been no sense of its own pride in what we can do. For example, restaurants have always been things that had to be foreign influenced. You know, I, I think going into the millennium, we can have a situation where, you know, it's British cooking with British produce grown in the countryside that's high quality and it's a confidence thing about where we're going. So that's why I chose this dish.